if I think uh, for the remainder of our conversation, it would be lovely if we could center martyrdom and sort of build the the profile of these uh, these uh, martyrs around that central concept, which again, this is what the students crave. They don't know they crave it, but they crave being able to give their life to something. Yeah. They want that. And so here we have, um, I don't even think I could name them all without looking at the book, uh, several, several good and holy priests coming from France, trying to evangelize the natives in Canada and the Northern United States, and ultimately losing their lives because of it. Um, so do you do you have a favorite uh, among the North American martyrs? Uh, you know, Jean de Brébeuf is, uh, might be my favorite. Uh, I, I think ever since I read the book, uh, Saint Among the Hurons, uh, mm. which some people say it's hagiography, but the, the fact is, is that a lot of this is coming from uh, what St. Ignatius put in, in the spirit of the Jesuits, especially in those days, this sense that, uh, that they should uh, write down and catalog all of the, the works that they were doing for the greater glory of God and, uh, and send these letters back from the Americas back to France mm -hmm. to try to inspire young men to study harder, uh, uh, join the Jesuits in the first place, study harder, dedicate themselves to, uh, to becoming better missionaries. And so these, uh, what they call the Jesuit relations, are, are very popular today amongst historians just because they have such good, they were, they were very good record keepers, but also very inspiring stories that, you know, talking about wanting to be part of something bigger than yourself, you have these, these, uh, these men in France, which is just the center of the cultured world at the time, right? Uh, this, we're talking about in the 1640s. 16, Since, yeah. Right. The 1640s, just the center of the cultured world. But that's a pretty special time when, you know, something like uh, feudalism, knights, all that kind of stuff was kind of in their rearview mirror. And I think for a lot of men, they, we, you know, we desire to, to be, to be uh, uh, properly led, right? You know, there, there's nothing, there's nothing unmanly about following a king, you know? So this, this image of Christ, the king, who's calling you to fight under his banner, you know, uh, of, the, of the banner of the cross, you know, to fight beside Christ for him. These were all Frenchmen who were inspired by that, by that sense, and also inspired by the stories of the Jesuits who, who arrived there, suffer all, all manner of hardships, all manner of hardships. And uh, starting in, with René Goupil in 16, uh, 1642, uh, Rene Goupil, so so he starts off. He he joins the Jesuits as a as a young man, and he's hard of hearing. He's he's mostly deaf, and so he can't keep up with the studies. So uh, so he they he, he leaves the Jesuit novitiate, but decides I still want to help. So he decides to go as mm -hmm. a layman uh, to the Americas, to what, what is today uh, upper uh, upper New York State and into Canada, and uh, he goes down there and and. Um, he, they accept his vows there as a lay brother, as a, you know, they're Jesuit priests, they're Jesuit brothers. So he's, he, they, they accept him back in as a brother. And very shortly after that, he's caught by the, by the Iroquois. He's seen making a, uh, making the sign of the cross on the forehead of, of a young person. He was a surgeon and a, and a doctor and he wanted to help people. And, and at some point there was somebody that there was a medicine man who was threatened mm -hmm. by his, uh, by, by, by what he brought to the table. And so when they saw him make the sign of the cross on a, on a young, uh, young Indian's forehead, uh, they killed him. And so that's the first of eight. So you, you got to consider that <laughs> seven more guys said, I want a piece of that action. You know? Yeah. I'm I, I, <laughs> going to keep going. Right. right. Exactly. I, I, I want a piece of that. And, uh, yeah. So, so, I think that's what, that's the kind of spirit of that age that we're looking at and the kind of spirit. Well, and of even, even prior to 1642, um, Jesuits who were evangelizing, and, th and there were some Franciscans involved as well, um, they were not well treated in all cases by the natives. They were either uh, received very poorly or they were received sort of tepidly, but then maybe later expelled. Uh, I remember reading a little while ago about Massé, uh, who was not numbered among the North American martyrs, uh, but who in 1613 or thereabouts um, was 
right about to encounter this new tribe, and they had just finished martyring three other guys. Uh, and so I, I, the, the, the account that I read in, in Butler is that he sort of arrives and witnesses this. Mm -hmm. And naturally, he stays. He says, well, they, apparently they need a priest. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, well, but that's, just, just in that very case with Rene Goupil, he's captured at the exact same time as I, St. Isaac Jogues. Mm -hmm. And so with Isaac Jogues, they decide to stretch it out with him and really torture him. Uh, really, really make it a little, make, make his misery a little bit longer. So they, you know, they, you can imagine they've got, they're beating him, they're cutting him open. They chew and cut off his fingers and pieces of his ear, all this kind of stuff. And then, right, exactly. So they, they, he, you often see him now pictured uh, missing a couple of fingers, right? So he'll, right. he'll be his, his canonical digits, right? His, so he uh, uh, that's exactly right. So couldn't offer was mass. A, yeah. But I, you know, at the time he, he figured his life was over and these Dutch, uh, traders had come in and, and, uh, they, they kind of bargained for a way to be able to sneak him out, uh, with some of these Iroquois. Mm. And so they sneak him out. He makes his way back to France and, uh, in, in France, you know, the, the he's going to be a hero, right? He's going to be, he's got the, he's got, he's got the obvious signs that he has suffered for the faith. He's, he's kind of a big deal. And he says, I have to go back. Like, I have right. to go back. And, uh, you know, that's such an amazing, j just that little piece of the story right there of knowing that he's got to go back. So he and uh, St. Jean de Lalonde make their way back uh, to the Americas. And just as soon as they get off the boat, they're killed. Right. So like <laughs> they, 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 it wasn't even like I have to go back because I know that I can be successful. I have to go back because I know if I just try again, all of our dreams will come true. No, it, it, the expectation was I have to go back because I can't die an old man in France. I have to, I have to die yes. doing, doing I, what I God to called me to do. What I've yeah. started. And so yes. it's, it gives me chills even just thinking about it sometimes, you know, St. Isaac is uh, one of my favorite saints. Honestly, I've got a painting of him on the other wall. It used to sit mm -hmm. behind me actually on this podcast. Um, I've got a son named after him who was mm -hmm. born on September 26th. So that's the day we celebrate the North American martyrs. Mm -hmm. um, Isaac is a powerful witness to evangelizing the new world for exactly the reason you mentioned, because he knows that in his particular case, I will not be the guy that changes anything. Right. And I am going to do this. So I like to think I, I, I'm not saying that I'm like a St. Isaac reincarnate by no means. But I like to take that same example. I know that this show, that my work at the high school, is probably going to do absolutely nothing, right? If I end up reaching somebody, awesome. You know, if the Holy Ghost touches somebody through my words, that's that's amazing. But probably not. Probably not. Uh, and that's okay because I'm going to press on because I know that through all the futility, Christ has a plan. And this is going to be my uh sacrifice, if you will. I mean, it, it, it pales in comparison. It's, it's not a comparison, but it's something that I can do in the face of certain failure, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when our Lord went to the cross, that was certain failure. When the, when the, the priests come to the new world, that's certain failure. And mm -hmm. it's not for hundreds of years yeah. but, uh, that any real progress is made. And even then it's, typically progress that's made by immigrants from Europe coming over and, and mm -hmm. taking up residence. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm getting off on a rant here. No, I mean, look, what you're talking about is, is exactly, th this is what you kind of to go back to what we were talking about earlier about what's got a young man, what captures a young man's imagination, right? Go to star Wars and you see, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi saying, strike me down and I will come back more powerful than you can imagine. You know, that's exactly, that's exactly what these men are saying in the 1640s. You know, I'll go back so that I can be struck down. I'll mm -hmm. go back. And, and I know that that will inspire more people to, uh, to come out here and, and offer themselves as well. And I know that from heaven, I'll be praying for you guys as well. And I believe they, I, I believe they look after me as well, you know, and, uh, and you, you know, you, you said it a couple of times about uh, these, the, the, you know, these priests came over. Remember, Rene Goupil was not a priest. I mean, he was a Jesuit brother. And then uh, uh, Saint Jean de Lalande was a layman. I mean, he was he was not he's not he's not a Jesuit. He's not a, he was what's called what they used to call a okay. doné, and a doné was was just a layman who would say, "I want to I want to just donate my time to the Jesuits. I want to just give the Jesuits my services, and I won't take religious vows. I won't go through formation. I won't become a priest or anything like that. I'm just going to give them my." 
my services. And so they'll, you know, as in return, they'll, you know, let me go to mass every day, you know, that sort of thing. And so there, there were some pretty dedicated people dedicated to this cause of saying, Hey, there's a whole world of people in this new world that, that Columbus discovered, you know, there's a whole mm -hmm. world of people over there who don't know the gospel. And we're going to have to go preach the gospel with our own blood. And, and, uh, and that's what they did. And, 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 you know, for that, I'm grateful, uh, you know, for what they do for me now in terms of praying for us and interceding for us, but also in terms of like the example of, okay, you think you got it bad? How about these guys? Right. <laughs> you know? I remind my children nightly, uh, when I give them uh, a short blessing before bed, that martyrdom ought to be their future, either red or white. Uh, and I, I do that in different ways, depending on, you know, uh, the, the mood of the day, shall we say. Um, but they, they understand, like my children know that if you're not willing to die for Christ, then... It, just don't bother. Yeah. There, there is no other thing to do in life. And so we keep, you know, again, back to these eight gentlemen. And these are not the only eight men that were killed. No, in fact, uh, the, these the, are just. Um, the, if you think about what, what today they are calling them the, the martyrs of La Florida, maybe you're familiar with that term, the martyrs of La Florida. It's basically all mm -hmm. of the first, the, you know, the, these, this first wave of Europeans that, that go on to the Americas that are killed by not only the Indians. Uh, some of some of these martyrs are Indians themselves, right? So they convert and then they're killed by other tribes. And then some of them are, are Catholics being killed by Protestants who have settled in the area as well. So uh, it's really all along the eastern coast of the United States. And there are more martyrs of La Florida uh, than there were uh, martyrs in Rome in, during the first centuries of Christianity. I mean, there that that's wow. a pretty amazing thing that the, the there's never been a time where martyrdom was more prolific uh, than, in, than on the East Coast of what today we call the United States, you know? Wow. See, and, and there, there we go again. So the, the, the saying by the once faithful and unfortunately apostate Tertullian mm -hmm. uh, that the blood of martyrs is the seed of Christians rings mm -hmm. true in this case yet again. And so, all right, so applying this back um, to the young men that you teach and, and mm -hmm. lead, and the young men and women that are our co-ed high school. Um. Ladies and gents, the preview is over. To watch the full video, go to canon211.locals.com and become a member, become a supporter, get access to exclusive content, stay in touch with the Canon 211 community. Well, that's it for today. Never give up. Keep on smiling and memento mori. Cheers. <laughs>